So we're moving on to the M unit, but if you're wanting to get more practice with percentages, don't worry, we're going to get a lot. We're going to be using them throughout this course, but there's two others that we really need to look into. So a quick recap on what relative units are. They call them relative units because they're relative to something else. They're either relative to a font size or to the size of a viewport. So the M and the REM are both relative to the font size of other elements. So M's are always relative to their parents' font size. And the font size is an inherited property. So if you don't declare it anywhere, it's getting it from the size that you set on the body. And if you didn't set it, the body's actually inheriting it from the root, the HTML element, and that has the, the 16 set on it. Now that I say by default, because people can override the font size in the browser in their settings. And so that can actually change what the default is on that property, but we're not gonna worry about that at all right now. Um, but let's go and take a look at how they work. So um, I've kept the site that we were already working on, but I've deleted some stuff and we're gonna be playing around with this a little bit. So before we get into the unit itself, I want you to think way back and we're gonna create a list. So do you remember how lists work? You can do either an ordered or unordered list. I really don't mind. See if you can remember how they are, but if you don't, that's okay. It's been a long time since we've seen a list, but do your best to try and remember uh, before I go and put one in here and just give it like two, three, four elements. Make sure there's not just one list item in there, but there should be multiple list items in there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create my own list. I'm gonna do an unordered list. So it's a UL and I'm gonna close that UL. And I'm going to come into here and just create a few list items. So open and close li. And I'm going to put in a few here and I'll fast forward while I put the content inside of these. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look quickly at what my list looks like there. So we have a bulleted list since I used an unordered list. And we can start styling things up a little bit. So let's come over to my CSS file here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my UL to have a font size of 1M. And when I do that, nothing's actually going to change because one means copy the font size of the parent. Now the parent doesn't have a font size on it. So it's gonna go down and down and down until it finds something that does have a font size on it. So the font size is being declared all the way up here on my body. So the font size is 18 pixels here. So that means if I change this 18 pixels to say 25 pixels, everything stays the same. So my paragraphs got bigger, this got bigger because as an inherited property, it's sort of the same as setting something as 1M. You're saying match, 1M is saying match the font size of the parent. So it won't actually have an effect. Where it will have an effect is, and I'm gonna bring my UL all the way to the top here just so I don't have to scroll up and down. Um, if I change this font size to 1.5, that's the same as saying that this is, so 1.5, M is equal to 150% of the font size of the parent. So we can go and look at how that would work. So if I refresh, now this is massive. It's now 150% the size of my paragraphs here, which are at the 25 pixel. So whatever I change on here, if I change this down to 10 pixels, this will now, so it'd be 1.5 M is 150%. So that means in this case, it would be equal to 15 pixels. So you can do a quick math to figure out exactly. So you can see this is super, super tiny down here at the bottom, whereas this list, at least it's at a readable size. <laughs> um, so it's always a relative unit. But it, as I said, it's always relative to its parent. So in this case, it's inside of section one. So if I said section one has a font size of 20 pixels, this font size is now 30 pixels because it's going to be 1.5 times bigger than the font size of its parent. So it's always a font size that is relative to its parent. Now you might be wondering why we'd want to do that, but imagine on these, let's get rid of this for the moment. I'm going to comment it out because we're going to need that later. But let's say on my H1 here, instead of setting a font size of 36 pixels, I said this is 3M. And then I said this one here, is 2m and then i have my body which is set to say 16 pixels for now so if i come and take a look at that everything is sized and it's all looking good but if i come and change this number and i set this to 10 pixels everything is going to adjust with that so now all of those units have automatically adjusted in size. My headings are smaller, my list is smaller, my paragraphs are smaller, my headings have shrunk. Everything is reacting together instead of each being a completely separate unit. And this can be really, really handy where you can change one font size and have it affect your entire site. It's very handy, it's very useful. But there is a big problem with M's and we're gonna see what that is in the next video.
before we get there though if you want to just play around in here try different m sizes see if you can get the hang of it play around maybe with your h1 and h2 sizes and then modifying this try playing with the parent font sizes if you want to and just get a little bit of a handle of how it's working just like percentages though these are units we're going to be using a lot from now on i just want you to get a vague idea of how they're working before we dive in and start using them a lot so even if it's a little bit weird right now it will be something you get used to a lot faster than you might think